The sun has spun up a large sunspot and rotated it round from east to west. And now, planet Earth is looking straight down the barrel of a huge, fusion-powered plasma cannon. And the malevolent beast has bellowed and blared and fired upon us. It's called a coronal mass ejection event. A CME. A solar storm. A solar storm is a general term that we use for solar flares and coronal mass ejections. Over sunspots, which are dark spots observed on the surface of the sun, we know that there are strong magnetic fields that surge up into the corona, steering the gas and causing something we call an active region, a large, bright knot of material. Periodically, that magnetic field can go unstable and cause tremendous explosion called the solar flare, or cause the material to fly across the solar system in what we call a coronal mass ejection, or CME. These get to be very large structures. When these things leave the, the sun's corona, they're fairly small. They're, made, they're the size of the sun or smaller, but they're expanding very rapidly. By the time they reach the orbit of the Earth, they're huge objects. A good-sized CME can loft as much as 500 million tons of matter off the sun. Superheated atoms, stripped of their electrons, electrically charged. And that can spell trouble for any electrical and electronic devices in their path. I'm always reminded of a Star Trek episode where they discover the enemy spaceship is firing weapons at them. And, and you can tell that it's coming at them because the energy bolt doesn't move, it just gets bigger. <laughs> so when you see that happening, you know you better duck. There's an initial burst of x-rays, which can increase the ionization in the Earth's upper atmosphere and affect radio transmissions immediately. In 1998, an enormous CME impacted the Earth and caused a satellite to go down over the middle of the United States that happened to be carrying pager signals for almost everyone in the United States. As a result, doctors and nurses didn't get pages about their patients. Anybody who was expecting a page didn't get it, and that had a real impact on our society. Similarly, the airlines flying over the poles, they can lose communications, and that's not legal for them to be flying in a situation where they're not in communication with the ground. Large electrical power grids can pick up huge power surges. Long steel pipelines are at risk. When one of these CMEs impacts the Earth's magnetic field, it causes the leading edge of our magnetic field to recoil toward the planet. That in turn changes the magnetic field near the surface of the planet and induces electric currents in anything that can conduct electricity. If it happens over a large power grid, the power grid carries a large DC current. These things have a rhythm. The great heart of our friendly local star beats once every 11 years or so. With each majestic throb, storm intensity on the sun peaks. Every 11 years, for reasons we don't understand, the sun's magnetic field completely reverses itself. The North Pole has one magnetic polarity, say, outward during one sunspot cycle. 11 years later, during the other sunspot cycle, it'll have it inward so that it undergoes this reversal. When the magnetic field is in the throes of reversing itself, we call it solar maximum. And we've just left the solar maximum period right around the turn of the millennium. 11 years is a long time in this increasingly technological culture of ours. Each coming solar peak will see whole new families of gadgets to attack. There have been examples in the past um, of spacecraft simply failing for no other reason than the fact that there's a huge geomagnetic storm and, and it's probable that some electronic component has failed. Yep, the maelstrom on the sun can prompt mayhem here on Earth, but only rarely are coronal mass ejections both large and pointed directly at us. We really have not in recent years seen a very large solar storm. In the 1940s, people observed a solar storm above the limb of the sun, that is to say, just off the edge of the sun, whose source region was nearly as large as the sun itself, perhaps a hundred times stronger than any that we've seen to date. Those little black sunspots 
Well, they're neither little nor black. They can be 10 times the size of Earth and 50 times as bright as the moon. And while they are cooler than the surrounding surface of our fiery solar furnace, they're still about 4,000 degrees Celsius. The sunspot is the surface manifestation of the magnetic field that causes the active region and the solar storm. So in some sense, the larger the sunspot, the more powerful of a storm we can expect. These hot jets of rising gas are called prominences, or spicules, and they're at least tens of thousands of kilometers high. They blast out electromagnetic radiation in energetic particles. Flares can dose astronauts near Earth with 100 times more x-rays than a visit to the local radiology doctor. And they can, and probably have, messed up your cellular phone service. But they do not spew the huge loads of so-called bulk plasma, like a CME. Beyond showing you solar prominences, a total eclipse also lets you see the sun's outermost glowing shell, the hot corona. The solar corona is the atmosphere of gas around the sun. It's many times larger than the sun itself and extremely tenuous, but it's extremely hot. It's at about a million degrees centigrade, almost 200 times hotter than the surface of the sun directly below it. Why it's that hot is a mystery that stood for over 50 years. When a thin part of the corona rides over a turbulent disturbance lower down, hot matter can explode up out of the sun's gravity well and be let loose in space. And that, my friends, is a coronal mass ejection. <laughs>